for a regular person, how can we combine all of this information so that a person can have um, a healthy circadian day? So uh, how can we be on time with our circadian rhythm? Uh, so along that line, maybe I can summarize. Um, so I always say there are six simple rules to um, nurture our circadian rhythm. Number one is try to go to bed at a consistent time and be in bed for at least eight hours so that you get seven hours of restorative sleep. Because when we sleep, that's when we detoxify our brain, we increase synaptic connection, connection between neurons so that our memory improves and our brain can, different parts of the brain can coordinate with each other so that next day we can take much better executive function, our emotional and intellectual health improve. So that's why go to bed at a consistent hour and then stay in bed for eight hours. And the second is after waking up, um, try to wait for one or two hours before the first meal, first calorie containing meal, because that's when the night hormone melatonin is declining and then the day hormone cortisol is reaching its peak. And I said, this is the time of changing of the guards. <laughs> and, uh, and both melatonin and cortisols have very different, very confounding effect on glucose regulation and nutrient metabolism. So that's why it's better to avoid eating uh, for one or two hours after waking up. And then number three is try to eat your first meal at a consistent time because that first meal gives signal to our circadian clock uh, that it's time to start the metabolic timetable. And then after the first meal count, um, whether it's eight, nine, 10 or 11, how many hours you can comfortably uh, eat within that window and then try to eat all your food and beverages that contain calorie within that window and outside the window water and your medications are, as, as prescribed by your physician will be okay. And what we're seeing is there are a lot of animal studies and human studies showing that this pattern of eating, which we call time restricted eating, because there is no um, explicit advice to reduce calorie or calorie restriction. And in popular media, it's uh, the popular form of intermittent fasting. Um, but you can do eight, nine or 10 hours. Uh, that seems to have a lot of health benefits. Um, and as you mentioned, which is not really discussed in many issues is it also has a better benefit on the brain because it seems to improve nighttime sleep. Um, so that's number three. Then the number four is um, don't forget about light. Um, and <laughs> because during daytime, you should go outside for at least 30 minutes to get some daylight. Daylight is the best antidepressant. It's plentiful and free. You just have to step outside. And then the number five is um, what we're finding. Again, circadian rhythm community has found in the last five to 10 years. And big discovery is uh, exercise in late afternoon, early evening is uh, much more beneficial than exercise um, at other time of the day. Oh. Having said that, I would say exercise anytime is much better than no exercise at all. <laughs> but if you're trying to get the best bang for your buck, uh, and if you're limited by time, then afternoon exercise seems to be better because there is less risk for injury. A lot of people, particularly older individuals, they are more at a higher risk for injury and exercising the late afternoon, they can reduce that risk for injury. Uh, second, it improves 24 hours blood glucose. So people who have pre-diabetes or diabetes, if they're trying to improve their blood glucose by exercise, that's the best time. And number three, uh, people who have high blood pressure, nearly half of the adults in the US and also in the UK and in a uh, good chunk of people, 30 to 40 percent of people in European Union uh, do have um, moderate or high blood pressure. And late afternoon, early evening exercise also improves blood pressure much better than morning exercise. And then uh, number six is Finish your meal two to three hours before going to bed. So no bright light and no food for two to three hours before your bedtime. And this so that 
it prepares your body for going to bed at a consistent time and also you get the deep restorative sleep that everybody deserves.